So this is my review of the Mountain Hardware Direct 2 tent and a bit of a preview of the AC2 um, tent as well. So this tent is a single wall alpine dedicated tent designed for lightweight travel in the mountains. Um, it's made by Mountain Hardware, We're quite a good brand actually. Um, some of their gear can be variable but this is a good piece of kit and that's the Direct 2 basically is, is the thing we're talking about. So I didn't want to review this, review this initially because um, the tent's no longer in production, but then I learned that the AC2 is the latest version of this tent. So there's been some updates and changes to the tent that I'll talk about later, but essentially you can get this tent now. Uh, in terms of pack size, you can see it there with the uh, Thermarest. Um, basically, it's pretty small, like it comes in pretty light. And just in terms of the tent, the actual body of the tent is the orange thing and the vestibule is detachable and optional and that's uh, totally removable from the tent. So I'll be discussing both uh, configurations of the tent throughout this video. So in terms of weight, there's a few numbers I've got to get through. Um, the Direct 2 on my scales weighs 1260 grams, so very lightweight um, for what it is. The AC2 comes in at 1585, so about 300 grams heavier for the, the new model. Uh, the footprint, as far as I can tell, is about 260 grams. I don't use that myself. I use a Tyvek sheet, which is 150 grams. So all up, I get around 1.3-ish or 4-ish for the tent and Tyvek. Um, in terms of other weights, the optional vestibule is about 860 grams. So if you go with the AC2 vestibule and footprint, you're going for about 2.7 kilograms. Uh, just the AC2 and the Tyvek would be 1.73 kilograms, and the Direct2 and Tyvek, as I said, is about 1.4. So this tent is my primary go-to tent for ski touring in the winter. Uh, it's great for use in places like Japan or Australia when the snow is reasonably dry. Um, you can have a lot of snow on it, as shown here, or you can have um, just reasonably dry conditions, but the tent is uh, pretty outstanding in, in full winter conditions. So I have to um, digress slightly to tell a very embarrassing story. So I was camped on Hapo Ridge in Hakuba, um, set up in this lovely setup on, up here and um, ski touring for a few days and uh, came back one afternoon to uh, the ledge into which my tent was cut and looked down and saw nothing. So my tent had completely disappeared. And I foolishly left it, the, uh, the tent body open. The vestibule was closed, but it obviously caught enough wind and wasn't pegged down sufficiently to take it down the hill. And uh, I looked down and down the slope, you can see here um, in the middle, there's a black dot, which is between those two pillars of rock. And uh, that is my tent rolling down the uh, glacier or gully or whatever you want to call it, down towards uh, whatever river's down there. So. I skied down to it, picking up all my possessions that had been flung out of it on the way and I lost a few things on the way, but managed to secure it and got down there and um, spent the night and then got out the next day with my tail between my legs. But I was most grateful for just getting my tent back and also for no one actually seeing it at all. So while I'm getting the tent set up here, I'm just going to talk about some of the pros and cons of the tent. Um, big pro is obviously the lightweight and it's an alpine shelter, so it's super light. Um, for what it is, you know, it's a pretty bomb-proof uh, winter shelter that you can take up into the alpine, like above tree line. So guys who are mountain hardware athletes were using this for climbing and ski touring, and it's been pretty reliable. So the lightweight is definitely an advantage. Um, it's a great size for a single person. I'd say it's more of a bivy tent for two people, though. If I had to describe it, it's basically a bivy bag that's grown two poles. So... Um, you could definitely get two people in there. It wouldn't be comfortable and you wouldn't have much gear in there with you. Um, so I'd recommend it mostly, as I say, for solo travel and I really love it for that purpose. Um, there's excellent headroom and living space. So it's quite a tall tent. You can actually sit up on it on a camp, in, in a camp, on a camp chair inside the tent. And there's a fair bit of room. The, the side walls are quite vertical. So you've got a lot of space in which to uh, live and work. Um, and cook and do whatever you need to do in the tent. Um, small pack size, um, it's really good in terms of how it takes up very little volume in your pack, so you can actually um, fit it inside your pack and not have to have a strap to the outside. And it's not just one package, so it comes with the tent itself and then you've got the pole bag, uh, so you can break it down and, and carry it separately or put it in different parts of your pack as you, as you need to. 
Uh, the other thing I really like about the tent is it's inherently strong and stable. So the construction is really good and the um, when you set it up, you feel like the poles really lock into place with the um, the sleeve that, that holds them in place. And with snow loading and wind, it's been really durable, surprisingly so for a tent that's so lightweight. So just to quickly talk about setup, um, you basically put the tent down like I am here and get inside and um, you cross your poles over and you sort of uh, put them into two grommets at the end of the tent, which I'm doing right now. And then um, you kind of just slot, like, you, you're actually secure in the tent, weatherproof and sort of out of the storm if you're in a storm and you can, you know, work pretty much within the tent once you've got it down. Uh, then, the, then the poles basically just get pushed in and they slide through a slot at the front of the tent. And once you've done that, you've pretty much locked them in. However, you do need to um, sort of secure it better as you go into the tent. So you'll see me spending a bit of time in the tent in a second just to um, align the poles properly and also to get um, them locked in securely. So the disadvantage of this tent, um, the biggest one I, I've detected over my years of use of this tent is um, basically you need a footprint or a, gr a ground sheet. It's essential. You can't just take not take one. It's, it's absolutely essential. Um, there's wear and tear on the bottom of the tent, um, and I've, I've been using a Tyvek ground sheet pretty much throughout my use of the tent, but it's still wear and tear, so I'd, I'd argue that you certainly need something underneath that tent. Just the base of it is not very durable. Um, another disadvantage is, you know, with inherently with a single wall tent, you can have more condensation, and really it's not designed to get hammered with rain day after day or hour after hour. It will eventually take in water, um, I know they're talking about the AC2 being much more waterproof now, which I'll talk about later, but yeah, I wouldn't want to take this tent to somewhere like humid or wet um, for an excessive amount of time. And along with that, the venting is problematic. So you've got a vent at your feet and you've got a vent above your head uh, when you're sleeping, but the vent at the feet doesn't feel like it's that effective. And, you know, if you're in a situation where you need to vent your tent a lot, like, for example, humid conditions, you definitely don't want this tent to be uh, the one you're using. So in terms of uses, this tent's great for alpine camping. So if you're a climber or a ski tourer, it's a fantastic tent. Um, even in summer for like hiking trips in the, in the mountains, I think it's a great tent. Um, as long as it's not going to pour with rain or if you're doing short-term stays, I think it's a great tent for any sort of high alpine adventure in any season. But obviously it's tailored towards winter. Uh, yeah, so it's a climbing tent and a ski touring tent. And especially if you want something that's light but livable for one person, and not a bivy bag, um, and you know you could get by with two people, but let's be realistic, you're going to be pretty much living on top of each other. Um, I'd argue it's not for two people and comfort. So if you don't, if you want to have a bit more space and got a fair bit of gear, I'd definitely invest in another tent. Even with the vestibule, it gets pretty squishy, um, and the vestibule doesn't give a lot of volume. To be honest, it just gives a bit more protection to the entrance. I'd, I'd argue. Um, and yeah, definitely not for hot humid conditions. Um, it's basically like a plastic bag once you've zipped it up and, and you know, you're in it. So you're not going to ventilate much and you're not going to um, shed water if there's anything on the inside. So I'd, I'd definitely avoid things like, you know, summer camping in tropical conditions with this tent. So the updated version of the tent is the AC2 and that's pretty much the same, you know, it looks like the same dimensions, same sort of basic design, but Mountain Hardware are talking about it being more waterproof, so it's, it's you know, more water resistant than the old Direct 2. Uh, you've got an additional top vent, so I don't know if they've got the vent at your feet anymore, but there's definitely a second vent at the top to allow um, air to go through. And there's a fly screen as well, so, um, you know, it's clearly designed to try and make it more uh, agreeable to conditions like the the ones where they direct to struggle, so humid conditions, uh, camping near a river, for example, where humidity is, is greater. So, yeah, they're trying to address those issues, but their marketing stuff is actually quite varied as well. It's definitely described as an alpine tent, but they've also talked up its ability to, to be used in a variety of other situations. So I'd argue it's pretty much mostly an alpine tent, but they seem to be trying to branch it out into other aspects of camping too. Just to talk through some of the features of the tent, uh, here you've got the foot air vent. Um, don't know if it's particularly effective, but it's there and it's probably effective in some degree. Uh, the guy lines are fairly secure and but they don't look super durable, but they seem to work and haven't had any problems with them so far. Uh, same with the uh, pe peg connectors. So again, pretty minimalist, but they seem to be uh, durable. You've got a bit of a top 
securing point so you can hang the hang it from a tree to dry or from a some some sort of upper position to dry it if you needed to uh, that's the back vent so the one top vent of the tent um, again you probably leave that open pretty much all the time the tent itself is pretty small so it's definitely roomy for one person but for two people you'd be really struggling to have a livable amount of room so you can see there you'd be pretty much pressed against both sides of the tent um, if you lay there uh, you definitely don't want to zip this tent up completely, so I've always left the vents open, so the foot and the top vent, um, it does warn you that you can suffocate if you don't. Uh, these are the securing things for the pole, so once you've put it in, this is what I was stuffing around with before in the video uh, to get it secure. Uh, that's the grommet, so you actually hook that into the uh, back of the tent first, and then you go from there. And just to show you some durability issues, like that's the base of the tent, and I've used it with a footprint, and you can see there's a bit of uh, wear and tear occurring already. I'll quickly talk about the vestibule and um, its uses. So basically, it just adds a bit more room to the front of the tent for storing gear and cooking and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty good. It, it clips on. I'll show you a quick video of how, how it actually gets on, but um, it's got one zip on the left-hand side, as you see that in that photo, and you've got like these grommets that essentially attached. There's an additional pole you have to add to the uh, vestibule to get it to function. So as we're seeing the vestibule go on here, I'll just quickly talk about um, Citrac 2 as a single tent um, or AC2 even as a solitary tent in one's setup. I think you could be, but it really depends on the conditions you go out in and how long you stay out in. Um, I know they're talking about increased weather resistance to rain, but I'm not convinced of the summer for performance. But again, that's not what it's for. It's an alpine tent. It's designed for winter um, and co cold conditions, uh, cold, dry conditions. So, you know, you really should have a, a three-season tent to go out there that can be lighter, or if, if not as light as this tent. I think the vestibule is definitely worth having as an option, but it's not essential if you're solo. So most of the time when I go out by myself in the mountains, I won't take the vestibule. But if I'm going out there for a while and I want a little bit more comfort, I might take the vestibule just to set up um, a bit more of a homely environment where I can cook and have some gear out and, you know, um, just be a bit more livable. So in summary, um, yeah, the Direct 2 uh, is a very lightweight tent with excellent livability for a single user. Uh, and it would be a great bivy tent for climbers and ski tourers, so, you know, a pair of tourers or climbers, but extremely squishy. So I, I definitely want the vestibule in those situations. Um, I do also think that, you know, there, there are other options out there now. So, you know, the AC2 is the modern incarnation of this tent, but, you know, it's definitely put on a bit of weight. So it's 300 grams heavier. Um, and there may be other options. I can think of Black Diamond and Rab, for example, um, having similar sort of tents. But I think for the price point, like this tent is actually reasonably cheap when I bought it. And the AC2 looks like it's pretty affordable. So I think the this is a great Alpine tent. If you use it in the right situation, um, in the right context, it's a fantastic tent. And, you know, I'd definitely consider looking at it if you're in the market for an Alpine tent. Even the AC2, it, 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 it being heavier, I'd still um, think it's worth considering um, as an option.